This is Math 110, Sections 3.1, Complex Numbers. Now the complex number system, what we know from that is that it's going to be the square root of a negative number. And we classify that as not being a real number. Now an example of that would be the square root of negative 1. It's not a real number because there's no real number x that satisfies this situation. x squared equals negative 1. And as a matter of fact, I can't square any number in general and get a negative value. And so that's where we can get those imaginary numbers. Now the number i is defined as being the square root of negative 1. And we can also say that i squared is negative 1. Now to prove that, if I know that i is the square root of negative 1, if I were to square this, I square both of these, the square root and the square will cancel out, and so that's how I'm going to get i equals, sorry, i squared equals negative 1. So a few examples on how to be able to rewrite our radicals that have a negative inside, our square roots in terms of i. The way we can break this apart, so if I have the square root of negative 7, the way you should look at this as it's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 7. Well, the square root of negative 1 is i, so I just get i root 7. b, this is going to translate into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 16. Well, the square root of negative 1 is i, the square root of 16 is 4, so that's the same as 4i. c, negative times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 13. So that's going to give me negative i root 13. And the last one, negative root 48. This is where we can break things apart even further. So this could be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 48. And we can break down that 48. The 48 can be broken into 12 times 4. And then the 12 can break into 4 times 3 times 4. And so we know that I have two 4's here. And so I can say that this is going to equal i. I can bring out a 4. And I still have that 3 left in the root. So it's going to be 4i root 3. Now a complex number is going to be a number of the form a plus bi where a and b are going to be considered real numbers. Now a, that's going to be the real part. And then the b, i, is going to be the imaginary part. So this is going to be the imaginary. Okay, So we have our real part and our imaginary. Now both of those pieces together, that's going to create our complex number. Now with these complex numbers, they still have all those properties of those other numbers that we've talked about. So it's commutative, associative, and distributive. And so when we get this example here, we can actually combine things together like normal. So 8 plus 3 is 11. 6i and 2i is going to give me 8i. If I have a negative, I can take that and I can distribute that, and so I get 4 plus 5i minus 6 plus 3i. So the 4 and the negative 6, that gives me negative 2. The 5i and the 3i, that gives me plus 8i. And so these would be my solutions to those examples. Now when we're multiplying, it's a good idea to remember that i squared is negative 1, because we're going to eventually have to replace that. But we can foil everything like normal as well. So first, that gives me 1. Outer, that gives me 3i. Inner, that gives me 2i. And last, that gives me 6i squared. So now I said that i squared is the negative 1. And so I can replace this as 1 plus, that combines together into 5i, plus 6 times negative 1, which is the same as negative 6, 
So 1 and negative 6 together, that gives me negative 5, and I still have that 5i. And we could also write it as the a plus bi. So this is probably going to be the better version to write it because it leaves it in the a plus bi form. I know sometimes, even like I had that general tendency, oh, I see the variable, I put it first. But writing it in the a plus bi form, that's going to be the better way. Now here I can FOIL it. 3 minus 7i, 3 minus 7i. Okay, remember, this isn't you just take the power distribute it. That's bad. So now FOILing that through, you're going to get 9 minus 21i minus 21i plus 49i squared and so that goes to negative 1 and so now I'm going to get 9 minus 42i and then 49 times negative 1 gives me minus 49 so you're going to get negative 40 minus 42i and that's going to be your answer Now what happens if we keep raising i to a power? So these are going to be kind of like the general definitions that you're going to want to look at and kind of memorize. i is the square root of negative 1, or the square root of negative 1 is i. i squared is negative 1. i to the third power, well we can break that apart into i squared times i. We know that i squared from the previous is negative 1, and we still have that i, so negative 1 times i is negative i i to the fourth power, we can break that apart into i squared squared. Well, I know that i squared is negative 1. The square is still there. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Now, knowing that we have these four, it doesn't matter. It becomes cyclic. So i to the fifth, I break that apart into i to the fourth times i. i to the fourth is 1, so I just have i i to the 6 is the same as i to the 4th times i squared. i to the 4th is still 1, and then therefore i squared is negative 1, and I get the negative 1. And you can continue that pattern on, and it will just constantly be cyclic. So there's a pattern that we can use here. Because we know that every i to the 4th equals 1, the pattern here is I can divide the power into 4, and what's going to happen is the remainder 1 I know that it's going to be i. Remainder 2 is going to be i squared, which is negative 1. Remainder 3 is going to be i to the third power, which is negative 1. And if it goes into it perfectly, so like if we look at it here, 8 divided by 4 is 2. There's no remainder. We know it's going to be 1. So let's use this pattern to our advantage. Visually, I can say that this is going to be i to the fourth to the ninth power times i. Visually, I can do that. i to the fourth power is going to be 1. 1 to the ninth is still 1. And so 1 times i is just i. Or I can say 37 goes into 4. Goes into 4 9 times. 9 times 4 is 36. I have that 1, so my remainder 1. Remainder 1 means that it's i. This next example, I have 58. 58 goes into 4. So the 5 goes into 4 once. Bring that down. 4 goes into 18 4 times, so that gives me 16. 2, so my remainder is 2. So if my remainder is 2, looking at this chart here, I can say that it's going to be i to the 58th power is going to equal the same as negative 1. Now the conjugate of a complex number, which is we said a plus bi, is going to be a minus bi. And we're going to say that both of these together, we're going to call these conjugate pairs. Okay, We're going to call these conjugate pairs. Now you're going to see these come up later when we're starting to solve. And you're going to notice a pattern that all of our complex answers are going to come together in these conjugate pairs. So to give a few extra examples of these, 
negative three plus seven i and negative three minus seven i, those are conjugate pairs. Notice the only thing that changed was the sign that's in front of the i portion or in front of my bi. Notice that this part right here, these are the portions that changed. That's a positive ai, that's a negative ai. And so all of these, we're gonna consider them conjugate pairs. Now multiplying conjugates together, we're gonna to think of it in terms of these, this definition, a squared minus b squared, how it foils. Whenever we multiply a conjugate pair, we only have to worry about the first two, so that's gonna be 25, and we only have to worry about the last two, which is gonna give me minus 49i squared. And so we know that this turns into negative one, and so 25 minus 49 times negative one is gonna give me a minus 49. Add those together and you're gonna get 74. Now, this allows us to rationalize the denominator. Okay, remember we said that we're not allowed to have these square roots in the denominator. It's a rule. And so i is the same, through, same thing as the square root of negative one. And so here, I have a square root in the denominator. And so I have to get rid of it. And so to get rid of it, I have to multiply by the conjugate of whatever the denominator is. So since this says one minus 6i, I want to multiply by 1 plus 6i. And I do that to both the top and the bottom. So then from there, you foil the top and you foil the bottom. So foiling the top, I get 2 plus 12i minus 5i minus 30i squared. On the bottom, I'm going to get 1 minus 36i squared. So now I know that i squared is the same as negative one. I have one right here and right here. And so I can rewrite this and I'll combine these together too. Why not? So I can say this is two plus seven i and then minus negative 30. And then because I have the negative from the i because this turns a negative I get the negative and then I have the 30 times negative one, negative and the 30, that's how I get the negative 30. And on the bottom here, I get one minus negative 36. So these become plus, and so I'm gonna get 32 plus seven i over 37. Now we have to be careful technically, 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 this is a correct answer. But remember we said complex, it has to be in the form of a plus bi. And so I should write this as 32 over 37 plus seven i over 37. Now it's in the a plus bi form. And so that is a more perfect answer.